Hey everybody, welcome back to Challenge Athletes Live. My name is Bob Babbitt, our next guest, Paralympic gold medalist in wheelchair basketball 2016. Megan Blunt joins us. Megan, how are you doing? Good. I actually, this has been very peaceful for me. <laughs> really? It's interesting because I've talked to a couple of different athletes, this whole, uh, this Christina Eastler back in the East Coast, she said this has been, you know, she's able to work from home and it so makes life so much easier than transferring to get into her car. She's like, you know, I, I know this isn't supposed to be great, but it's actually been pretty good for her. And you're feeling yeah. sort of the same way? Yeah, it, I mean, of course, it was a, a huge adjustment, and that adjustment period was kind of rough, but yeah. um, I'm really finding peace. Like, it's, it is, it's very different from the life I've always lived, which is go, go, go. Always go, go, go. And so growing up, you were go, go, go. You played yeah. anything and everything. Mm -hmm. And now, were you planning to play sport in college? Um, I was talking to the, the community college soccer coach, um, yeah. because I never really saw college for me, but, um, you know, no one in my family went all of that, but I started realizing like, I need to, I need to push myself. And so I was starting to talk to the community college soccer coach. I was going to play for them, um, in the fall after I graduated high school, but right. yeah. Yeah. So one month before you graduate high school, you're on the back of a motorcycle. And one month after I graduated. One, yeah. one month after you graduated. Oh, one month after yeah. you graduated. That would have been a whole nother story a month before. <laughs> oh my God. One month after high school graduation, you yeah. are on the back of a motorcycle and mm -hmm. get paralyzed with 18 bones, broken spine. What did you know of, of people in wheelchairs at that point? Did you have much exposure? No, I, there was one kid in my elementary school, um, and he, he was awesome, super popular. He was the only kid in the, like, in a wheelchair, I think a manual wheelchair, um, so there were a couple other kids in, like, power chairs, but, right. um, but I didn't know him that well, and he was the only one I saw that was kind of, like, you know, more, like, my age and just happy, but, um, I, everyone else I saw in wheelchairs, they just didn't look happy. Like to me, I know that I already had a perception, you know, that I, I knew nothing about. So, um, everyone looked sad. That was my, I, yeah. I was just told that we should, in a way, you know, I was always like told that we should feel sad for them. It's a sad life. And that's what I knew. And as somebody who had dealt with depression already, how did you deal with, with being in a chair and having this new life? Um, well, because I dealt with depression already, to me, nothing is harder than depression. Like, uh, so physical challenges, I've always been really good at. I've always done like manual labor and, you know, worked hard and I can work forever. And, um, but mentally that's the, the hard stuff. So the accident, um, it did not, it, it didn't, it didn't make it harder. It made me have to face it, which yes, that's harder. Yeah. But it's also, it gives you strength. And um, so I don't know if I really answered that, but the accident was not what was hard. It was just depression and it, my depression didn't get worse because the accident, um, that's yeah. That's pretty fascinating. And when did you find wheelchair basketball? When did you find that outlet? Um, a year after my accident. Did yeah. you know right away that this was going to be special for you? Or was it at that point you're just going, you know, it's just nice to get out and do something and be with people? Yeah, uh, I knew right away because I had been living in the dark for that entire year, um, just trying to hold on to that little bit of hope that I had deep down, you know, believing that it can get better and it will. I just had no idea how. And that first year after my accident, I thought the only way to be happy or, you know, overcome this was to walk again. And that was my only, like, you know, I was looking into stem cells. I was stressing about that. I was like constantly like running into just a brick wall because I felt like that was the only way. And no one else knew of 
you know, to no one knew of anything. <laughs> like, yeah. And if they did tell me about adaptive sports in rehab, um, which they probably did, they didn't make it sound cool because it didn't stick, you know, like it would have, I would have been intrigued, you know, if it was shown to me, it's not just people in wheelchairs, just, you know. <laughs> so when did, when did it become cool? When did you, <laughs> yeah, when did you feel like this is actually pretty cool? Well, when I, when I saw it, like, the hardest part about the accident was the regret I felt for everything I had taken for granted before. And I was just like, I, like I th said, I thought the only way was to walk again so I could overcome all that regret and push myself harder and, you know, make it better. And, um, and the thought that I might never be able to do that again was so devastating. I didn't think I would ever over like be able to let go of that. And, um, and then wheelchair basketball, when I was introduced to it, I just knew right away, like, this is, this is my second chance and my light at the end of the tunnel, you know, and this is, this is my way to overcome that regret. So. Yeah. And at the, at the same time, so when did you get to the point where you thought, okay, I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at this and I can potentially make a U.S. team. Yeah. Uh, so, so at first it wasn't, like you asked if when I thought it was cool. It wasn't super cool at first. It was frustrating and I was in the wrong chair. Uh, I was in my everyday chair at first right. and they were in basketball chairs. I didn't know the difference. Then I got a chair to borrow and it was too big for me, but it was still better than what I had. And it was always frustrating and I always wanted to be the best, um, be better. And then I found out about the Challenged Athletes Foundation and I applied for my first grant and they got me my first basketball wheelchair. And that was when I knew that like things were going to get better and they're, you know, like I can be good because I can get this equipment that I was already thinking, you know, it's two to $7,000, you know, for a basketball wheelchair. But yeah. suddenly I started realizing this is all possible. Like this is going to happen. It's funny because I think a lot of people think, uh, you're playing basketball, you're in a wheelchair, what's the difference? A chair is a chair. But mm -hmm. having something designed specifically for you that moves when you move mm -hmm. makes a huge difference, right? Yeah. You, you wouldn't play in shoes that were too big that you're stumbling on. And when you try and make a quick turn, you know, you like, you don't move. You get stuck. <laughs> so when you go to Rio and you, um, uh, you guys come away with the gold medal, I mean, uh, give me a sense of what that meant to you for somebody who had, you know, been so down and then here you are at the pinnacle. Now you've got a gold medal and it's, it's sort of showing that you guys are, are the best. How did that affect you? Uh, I mean, our team was just an incredible team and that's what makes a gold medal team, you know, is something really special and that's what our team had which was just always supporting each other pushing ourselves and each other to be better and we were all connected with our communication and you know our effort and uh so having you know winning gold was just like we really earned that and it um it was just really special to know that when you put in the work and you work together, you know, you can accomplish what you set out to do. So the last few years, you, you were in a, a commercial with Colin Kaepernick. You did some, uh, some shooting with, with Kobe Bryant. Talk a little bit about those type of experiences, because I'm sure when you were injured, that was the last thing you'd be thinking, that you were going to be a world-class athlete hanging out with other world-class athletes who basically did the a, did a sport, but they just did it differently. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, thanks to CAF, I was in that commercial, uh, the commercial with Kobe. It's not really a commercial. What, what is it? Like a, a promo. Yeah. Yeah. Girls of sport. And uh, those experiences are I mean, they're everything for me and my journey to finding, you know, happiness and peace and love and trust. And um, so it, those, those help remind me the good in the world and just like what's possible. And, you know, what Kobe did was 
helping the Challenged Athletes Foundation. He wants his food. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and it was, you know, to be a part of that, a part of something so much bigger than ourselves, you know, and to be with Kobe doing that is pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah, really amazing. So pretty what are the goals good. now with the with the Paralympics being shoved back a year? How does that how does that affect your focus? <laughs> Obviously you've got your 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 cats doing some good stuff there, man. Right? <laughs> yeah. That was a bad toss on my part, but um I for me it's it's a really big blessing because I wasn't really, my journey with mental health is, is a, I mean, it's, you feel on your own a lot of the time, you know, trying to figure it out. And I ended up getting onto an antidepressant last year because I wasn't doing well. And I, I almost didn't go to tryouts. Um, and I didn't go to tryouts the year before because of my depression. I canceled okay. last minute. So I, um, I got on this antidepressant and it was working, but it ended up having side effects that weren't helping me. And I didn't have time to like get off of it and find a new medication. And, and I wanted to be my best at the Paralympics, you know? Mm -hmm. And so luckily for me now, I have a year to get therapy and to work through things and to be in the place I want to be at the Paralympics. So, yeah. Very cool. And Talk a little bit about when, when you think back to that girl who, uh, young woman who was in that awful accident, what would you tell her now, knowing where this journey has come? Um, well, I already, this sounds like, I don't know, but I already knew then what I know now. I just have experienced the things for you know, because I, I always believed everything happens for a reason and it's to make you stronger. And I said it in the hospital um, when it happened. I just didn't know how or why or what, you know, but, well, I did know why it's to make you stronger. <laughs> but So I, I knew that, but now it's just all coming to reality, you know, to, yeah. Okay, now we're going to the rapid fire. Okay. Best CAF memory? Um, I think uh, when I got laid off and I contacted them and they set up a meeting and uh, talked me through and they just are always there for you no matter what. So that was one. <laughs> Go to comfort food? Um, uh, fish food ice cream. Ooh. Most recent TV show binge? I just can't get into any TV right now. I don't know. <laughs> or ever. <laughs> favorite, favorite book or podcast? Um, my I really like the book Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Nice. It's pretty educational. <laughs> During this time, the person you miss seeing the most? Um, I think my grandma. Yeah. Uh, the place you can't wait to visit when this is over. Um, the little, uh, little girls, Alex and Penny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about Alex and Penny. Well, they got, they both got CAF grants this year for their first time applying. And so, um, their mom is just so thankful because Alex is going to get a basketball wheelchair and they both have cerebral palsy. They're twins. Um, they're six now, I think, um, which, yeah. Um, but they, Penny's cerebral palsy is a little more severe, so Penny can't push her own chair and stuff like that. But Penny's going to get a bike, and she's, they're so thankful that Penny's also going to be getting the equipment that she needs to be able to be a part of, you know, all these fun things. So it's really cool. How important is it for you to be that role model for that, for these little girls, little boys who don't know what their life is going to be? Uh, that's that's everything. That's where I get my strength from, and that's what has shown me the purpose behind. You know, everything happens for a reason, and I'm just so thankful that I can be that person for them because I know how bad I needed it, 
when I got in the accident. I had Elena Nichols. She was the first one that I found that was my yeah. role model. And it's really important. Essential. Uh, yeah. what, what words do you love hearing from a coach? Uh, you got this. What words do you hate hearing from a coach? Stop overthinking. <laughs> is that is that something you do? Overthinking just a little bit? I mean, well, what the bad thing is, is when they tell me not to overthink, I wasn't overthinking. Maybe I wasn't overthinking at the time they said it, you know? And then I'm like, do I look like I'm overthinking? Like, and then, then I you overthink. start overthinking. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> It doesn't help. <laughs> so, so, Megan, for, for a lot of our challenged athletes out there, this is stressful times. Uh, your message to folks sitting at home wondering what's next for them? Uh, I would just try and, you know, for me, everything happens for a reason, like I said. And so you just find the good in it because something like I live by is everything happens for a reason and you make you decide what that reason is you do it's good or bad you know the accident could have been bad or it could have been good and um it's up to you so make what you're experiencing right now you know for for the better love it megan thanks so much for taking so much time always so great to catch up with you you too thank you megan blunk has been our guest everybody this is challenged athletes live we'll catch you next time <laughs>